I turned a $20 bill into a business that generated more than $100,000 in just 12 months. But the best part is that I built it all without writing a single line of code. And so today I'll be sharing my story, but more importantly, I'm going to be breaking down the exact strategy and tools that I used so that you can do the exact same thing, or maybe even better. Welcome back to the Startup Studio, everyone. I'm Christian. Okay, so to fully understand the story, let's go back to the beginning. You see, 15 years ago, I started my first software business when I was based in Paris. And like most ideas in the digital era, it required for me to build out software. The problem was that I didn't know how to code, and no, I didn't have a co-founder who would build it for me. So over the next two years, I learned the hard way what it meant to be a non-technical entrepreneur. I hired cheap developers overseas just to find out that it was complete spaghetti code and I had wasted six months of my time going back and forth with them. I then decided to hire professional programmers, but the result there was that they were so expensive that I very quickly ran out of money. And despite having raised some money from investors, I had to close down the company and I failed it completely. Frankly, looking at my family and my friends and telling them that I have failed was one of the most embarrassing things that I had to do. And telling the investors I wouldn't be able to make money on their investment was also a really heavy blow for me. But I'm telling you this story now because in hindsight, this was the reason why I had started We Are No Code. So fast forward 10 years and I had just moved to Los Angeles and I got the call from a friend who wanted me to become the director of a startup accelerator program. It was a program called Founders Boost that was sponsored by Google in which I would train eight to 10 founders out of about 300 applications every six months. And then I would put them on stage at Google where they would pitch in front of more than 100 to 150 investors. Now it was around the exact same period that I met a friend who introduced me to the concept of no code. And I remember looking at a tool called Webflow that was very powerful and that my friend was using to very quickly test out his startup ideas. And at the time, the concept of no code was very novel, but I already knew that this was going to completely revolutionize the way that people build startups moving forward. And then one day, late at night, when I was reviewing startup applications, it hit me hard. Out of hundreds of founders who were applying for the program, about 80 to 90% of them were in a very similar situation. They had spent tens of thousands of dollars and wasted one to three years of their life and had very, very little progress to show for it. So the question was, why are these founders struggling so much and how can we actually help them? Well, you see, most of them were really facing two key problems. The first one is that they were usually first time entrepreneurs and didn't even really know how to get started. So they went and pieced together the internet to try to figure it out through trial and error. The second thing is that they were non-technical and they usually either hired cheap programmers like I had, or they hired expensive programmers and were very quickly running out of money. And that's when I had my light bulb moment for We Are No Code. I realized that to get people to learn how to get started from scratch, I could grab all of the startup methodology curriculum, all the books I had read, and all the strategies that had been taught in Silicon Valley for 50 years and break those down into actionable steps. And then I could teach founders these drag and drop app builders to build their products without relying on expensive programmers and to really have control in their companies. And by combining actionable startup methodology with concrete skills and teaching people how to build and launch products, I could put together an online accelerator that would help early stage founders launch their businesses with no code. But ideas, my friend, are a dollar a dozen. So how did I take this concept and execute on it, transform this $20 bill into $2,991? Let's talk about the launch strategy. So super jazzed about this exciting idea, I called up my buddy who introduced me to no code and we sat down over the weekend to flesh it all out. So I drove over to his apartment on Saturday morning and the first thing we did was a brainstorming session. I basically started listing out some names that I found pretty cool that were related to non-technical entrepreneurs. And after checking the domain availabilities, we fell on wearenocode.com. And for me, it pretty much hit all the marks. We was community driven. R was a sense of belonging. No code was the sense that we were not coders. And in about one hour, we had decided, bought the domain name and moved forward. We then used Sketch to put together a first version of the logo. This is what it actually looked like. And we then jumped into Webflow and built a first version of the website. Now the next day I outlined the full curriculum and we finished up the copywriting, the imagery and the offer itself. And this is what the website looked like right here. We pressed publish and went live and now we had to figure out how to get our first paying customers. And since I had made some friends in the startup ecosystem in Los Angeles, a friend of mine told me that he could give me a table at one of the events that was happening in Orange County so that I could be part of the startup alley and showcase what we were building at 
we are no code. So with my friend, we printed 200 flyers and went to this startup event with clipboard, pen, and that's pretty much it. And I'll never forget, it was absolutely boiling. We put up a monitor that showcased our website that looked nice and we started talking to people. And we got 150 emails from people who were interested in the concept and wanted to know about when we launched. We also took all of the information that we had found from these founders to be able to improve the curriculum. And as soon as we arrived home from the event, we sent an email to those 150 people, letting them know that in three weeks we'd be launching. Now the problem was that we only really had a website and the outline of a program. So we basically had one week to make the offer live, and then we had three weeks to build out the curriculum to actually run the event. I knew that there was an awesome platform called Teachable that we could attach to a subdomain to be able to deliver all of the methodology and all of the curriculum to our students. And I also knew that you were able to drip the content. So what I did is that I recorded the first three modules of the program, meaning that when we started three weeks later, we had another three weeks from the launch to be able to deliver the additional material for the other modules. And on the other side, we created an email sequence that would send out emails to let them know that we had opened up the applications that they could now enroll for the program. And we gave them a 50% discount on the tuition. And we got six people enrolled for a total of $2,991. And yes, we were able to deliver the entire program perfectly in time, week by week. And we were starting to get really good feedback from the program as well. So that's how we got our first paying customers. And no, this was not an easy process. I'm going to be breaking down some of the hardships we faced throughout scaling this business. But before that, let me highlight some of the tools that we've used and how that's evolved over time. For the launch I've just described, we started off with a simple combination between Webflow for the website. Then we used Teachable for the video curriculum and the course section. We used Send in Blue for emails, which is now called Brevo. And we used Slack for the building of the community. Now, once we'd gotten some feedback from those early customers, and as we were growing out the company, we decided to add a couple more tools to the toolkit. So for the next version of the product, we actually built our own custom members area. We used both Webflow and MemberStack, and we also added Zoom so that we could start doing group coaching sessions as well. And at this point, since we used a couple of different tools, we were using Zapier to be able to deliver information from one app to another. So for example, when someone gave us their email address, we would zap that information into our email marketing tool that would automatically send them a number of emails. When a new person entered the Slack community, we sent them a personal message, letting them know how they could get started in the community. Or when someone enrolled in the program, we would automatically create an account for them. In terms of payment processors, we've always used Stripe and sometimes we've used Teachable's internal payment tool as well. And now several years later, we've actually shifted into Disc because now we have a combination of courses, accelerator, and coaching as well. And before you think this was all smooth sailing, let me break down some of the obstacles that you might face when you're launching your own business as well. So the first and probably the most important obstacle we had to face early on was that people had no idea what we were talking about when we talked about no-code tools. And the people who had heard about no-code tools might have played around with no-code tools that just weren't that powerful. So there were quite a few misconceptions about the power and what it was able to do and what it wasn't able to do. Now you can probably build 80 to 90% of all software with no-code but before you could only build certain things. And since we were marketing something that was quite new as a concept, it was a lot more education that we had to do. And we had to invest into teaching people for free on YouTube, putting on live webinars, events, just to get people to understand why this might be useful for them. Now, the second obstacle that we faced was after the end of year one, we had already hit $100,000. And so we started investing money into actually marketing the product and we used Facebook ads to market it. Now, at first it worked pretty well, but the problem is that the cost of running ads became dramatically higher and we had to quickly actually stop paying ads and suddenly found ourselves without any additional leads coming into the company and we quickly had to find a better long-term solution which is when I decided to start shooting my very first YouTube videos with founders but another big obstacle in running ads that we found was that we were very quickly kind of competing against these fake online gurus who teach people how to make money without you know doing anything basically passive income chill out in Mexico have a margarita and you just have tens of thousands of dollars hitting your account which was just not the reality of building startups or businesses altogether. Our value proposition was very different. It was, hey, learn the skills, 
We'll accompany you and coach you to help you to be able to implement these skills. You'll learn how to build out apps and websites with no code and launch them. But ultimately it was less convincing than what people wanted, which was don't do any work and get all the results, which is not what we sold. And that actually made it quite difficult for us to communicate our message and to pierce through all of the noise. But the great thing was that we actually started getting some really powerful success stories like Heidi, who built Aware Health. She launched it in our program in only eight weeks. She was able to go to $25,000 in monthly recurring revenue. I then introduced her to the managing director of Techstars LA and she got in. She's at a million dollars in annual revenue and has more than $10 million of potential in the pipeline. We also have a founder called Sukesh who is now at $50,000 a month for his company called Altgage or Gavin who was able to turn his t-shirt printing business into a software as a service with our program. And so as we started getting these success stories of people who had worked hard and achieved the results, we were able to use those to get further customers inside our program. By the way, if you're looking to launch a business or you have a business and you want more tips for entrepreneurs about no code and AI, then subscribe to our newsletter that you can find inside of the description box below. It's completely free and you're gonna get weekly tips and tricks so that you can avoid all the mistakes that other people are making. So subscribe if you'd like weekly tips and tricks on how to launch startups or how to build software with no code and AI. And another issue we faced along the road is that my co-founder actually decided that he wanted to go and build a Web3 company about two and a half years into We Are No Code. And of course I was super supportive. We had very clear contracts in place. So we just had to execute on those contracts. And ultimately you can't really stop people from doing what they really want to be doing. But it still was difficult for me to adapt to being a solo founder and running the company alone. But instead of focusing on the obstacles, I want you to focus on the key takeaways from this story and the things that I've really learned over the four years of launching We Are No Code. Number one, and probably most importantly, test and validate your startup idea before you go all in on it. There's a proven methodology to go about it. And if you're not able to sell before you actually build, you're very likely going to build the wrong thing and you have a much higher likelihood of failing because of it. Number two is that if you don't know how to code, learn no code tools. Yes, it requires some learning, but it gives you so much more control over your company and you can actually make changes to your product as you hit the market, which again will give you more shots on goal. And no, my friends, you do not have to be the chief technical officer of your company forever, but as you're getting things off the ground, it is the most cost-effective way, and so I highly recommend it for you. Now, number three is consistency is king. Some of the actions that you take today are only gonna show results in six, sometimes even 12, 18 months. This is a marathon, not a sprint. So be completely impatient in your current actions that you can take today, but be patient with your expectations of the results and when they're actually going to show within your business. Which leads me to my next point, which is all around action over words. Execution and taking action instead of just overthinking things is probably the biggest difference between a first time and a second time or experienced entrepreneur. So focus in on small tasks that you can actually do on a daily basis instead of looking at the mountain and getting scared. But as soon as you start breaking it down into actionable steps, the taking of the action is the thing that's gonna make you learn the most and the thing that's very quickly going to start accumulating and create the growth you're looking for. Now my fifth piece of advice and learning from building this company is progress over perfection. If you get stuck in trying to do something perfectly, you're gonna invest way more time than required when you very quickly should be able to do things with 20% of your energy, yielding 80% of the results, like Pareto's principle. Now maybe the most important lesson is about people. Today, I still go out for lunches and dinners and have amazing conversations and a great friendship with my co-founder who chose to leave to build a Web3 company. You see, the clearer you can be contractually with the people that you work with, where everyone knows the rules of the game, the better your relationship is going to be personally. And this is super, super important because oftentimes we get into business with people who are our friends and sometimes even our family. So make sure you have clear agreements so that you can protect your relationships. Okay, my friends, if you're enjoying this video, let's make an agreement right now. Subscribe to the channel for me to create more awesome videos like this. Comment on my videos so that I can create more videos that you will appreciate. That way, both of us win. Is it a deal? Absolutely. Great doing business with you. Now, everything you've learned in this video will help you launch your next business and reduce the number of mistakes you make. But if you don't have an idea, then you can't even get started. So check out this video because here I'm gonna be giving you five no-code SaaS ideas that you can start today. Thanks for watching everyone, let's go.
go.